Hello everyone and welcome to discover a new Alpine. Contrary, yes, to what you may think, this car behind me is new. Yes, indeed. It's an A110R Turini, or maybe Turini. It's French, it's not Italian. What's different compared to an A110R? Not much, really. It's located here. GT Race rims, forged aluminium instead of carbon rims. The rims produced by Duquesne, the super lightweight aerocarbon rims, and then that's it. And if you want to know it's a Torini, you can look for the emblem. We couldn't find it. It's not written anywhere. Not here, not there, not here either. Not there, not here, not inside either. Not on the dashboard either. Maybe at the rear. No, it's not written there either. I'm disappointed. If you have an A110R and you take off your carbon rims and put on this one, it becomes a Torini. It's as simple as this. And you're going to ask me, why a Torini? Well, it's quite simple. The rim manufacturer was having trouble meeting demand. Because yes, the car sold well. The brand has sold almost 550 cars. The problem is that there are delivery delays because the rims can't be manufactured. So Alpine had an idea. We're going to use rims that are easier to supply. And thanks to this Torini version, people who don't want to wait will be able to receive their cars a little earlier. So what's new on this car? Well, as we said, the rims. These rims add 13 kilos to the car's weight. So divide 13 by four, 3.25 kilos per rims. Carbon saves 3.25 kilos per rims. That's huge. In the end, the car goes from 1,082 kilos to 1,095 kilos. As a result, the price also changes, of course. The A110R sells for 112,000 euros and the Torini for 106,000 euros. Are the rims really 6,000 euros? On the performance side, there are some small changes. The zero to 100 loses a tenth from 3.9 seconds to four seconds on the Torini. For a thousand meters, it's the same thing. You go from 21.9 seconds to 22 seconds. And for top speed, 284 kilometers per hour instead of 285 kilometers per hour. It's anecdotal, I'm sure you'll agree. And so the fact that performance is degraded on this Torini, well, that begs the question. Is it still as great as ever? These differences, in fact, bring the car closer to the A110S, which costs much less. Let's recap. The differences between the S version and the R Turini. Of course, the price, 77,500 euros versus 106,000 euros for the Turini version. That's a lot considering that these cars make the same power. And for the zero to 100, 4.2 seconds for the S version, four seconds for the Turini. In terms of power to weight ratio, it's also a little better on the Turini. Well, it's so little that I don't even think it's noticeable. There are a lot of little things that sow doubt and raise questions. And then there's something else. When you take a Porsche 911 and put it up against a GT3 RS, you immediately see that it's not the same car, that they're not in the same category. When you look at an A110R and a normal A110, mm. they're pretty much the same, aren't they? Don't you think? Someone brought one, take a look. <laughs> All right, please. They're pretty much the same, aren't they? That's it. Almost. Yep. Hmm. Carbon side skirts. A little hole here that we don't have on the other one. Carbon on the top also, on the roof. Okay, okay. There's a little rear wing as well, but there's no rear window. This one is better. <laughs> no, seriously, they're not that different. All right, you can go now. Okay. And if I tell you about the interior and storage space, the competitors do better than that. No, there's one thing better than the GT3 RS, who loses his front trunk. The 110R, it keeps it. Here it is. It's real carbon. It's light mm. and fragile. And there's even a rear trunk. Wonderful. A toilet bag can be stowed in it. And now the interior. Inside the car, looking for a glove box? You can keep on looking, there isn't one. If you're looking for storage, there's something here you can get your hands around. Ah, there's a little storage space between the seats. And it's an option that costs 500 euros. What's missing inside this car? Look, there's no central rear view mirror, but why? Well, because there's no rear window, it's opaque. The rear window is replaced by a carbon engine cover. And then to top it all off, this thing here, if you have a Twingo, this thing is the same. You can't look in a Porsche Cayman, you'll never find a Volkswagen up button, never. And the steering wheel paddles are the same as on the Clio, yes. I think they are. The interior isn't exactly the stuff of dreams. You have some elements with a microfiber material. Here, <gasps> wow, carbon seats. I don't think there's an ultra light carbon bucket seat as comfortable as this one. Nice work, Sabelt. Uh, well, it's time to go. But just before, let me show you one last annoying thing. Look at this, six point harness, it's good. It's for safety and it's sporty. Well, it's a bit difficult to lock. In this case, it's still okay. You need to hear the clicks. And for it to be effective, you have to tighten it well. Hey. Ahem, you can't move. Mm, you see, sporty. 
And after that, you can't close the door. <laughs> no, please. Install the harnesses and seat belts, Mr. Alpine. Okay, let's go. <laughs> We have access to the Circuit du Var for a few laps. So there's a sport mode and a track mode that beeps near the red zone. It annoys a lot of people. It's that beep. Listen. The A110R and the Turini. Actually, I can't tell you the differences between these two versions. I'm not Max Verstappen. The difference between the R version's Aero Carbon and the R Turini's GT race rims. Forged aluminium rims, but yes, the A110R in general was designed for the track. The car's brakes are much better cooled. The damping is much harder than the standard version. It's 60% harder than the normal version and 10% harder than the S. But what's interesting is that this car has adjustable suspension. To get the best driving dynamics, you need to change your settings to suit the track. You have to do it manually in the garage. Here on the racetrack, we're actually driving with road settings. But it does allow us to discover one thing. Even if it's called R, it doesn't mean racing. Alpine sells it to you as a road legal track car. Yes, it's more adapted than all the others. And R means radical because it's lighter. But in the end, it's not a sad car to drive, like all track cars. Michelin Cup 2 tires. And when we go hard into the corners, there's plenty of grip. You can find the perfect line. Here you go. And then you can brake super late after the 100 meters. And then it turns perfectly. I'm even a little too short, the car pivots. The rear follows perfectly. And that's the magic of Alpine. The R, A110R. These cars are a blast to drive. It's great, they're super easy to handle. These cars can be driven in many different ways. You can't do that with every car, especially when they're heavy. Take a look at this. That was the ESP in track mode. And did you see how far I was able to go? It's crazy. Let's go a step further. Switch the ESP completely off. You have yet another car, a completely different car. Shaking from the rear like few other cars. It's a joy, a joy to drive. We have a weight distribution of 46.54 with a mid-engine. The front tires need to be warmed up a bit. It's important to avoid understeer, but as soon as the tires are warm, the car pivots very easily. And to tell you the truth, this car can do more than just swivel. You never feel like you're going to lose it. This car, it's completely crazy. This is the virtuous circle of a good car. Lightweight. These cars let you do whatever you want. You consume far fewer brakes and tires, and you'll keep them much longer compared to a 911. A 911 weighs 1,500 kilos. The GT3 RS, this is a car to drive, not a car to look at in the paddock, not to idealize the numbers in the pit lane. Besides, this car isn't crammed full of electronic systems. You are free. You are free to make mistakes. It's the nature of the car that will forgive you these mistakes. It's completely crazy. And there's something even crazier and more formidable about the A110R. It's even better on the road. Come on, let's go. So what's so great about this car? More great on the road than on the track. This A110 Arturini? Well, let's start with the rims. You'll be less afraid of scratching those aluminum ones, won't you? Carbon rims can be expensive. Otherwise, I don't like the Alcantara steering wheel. No, it's microfiber. It's slippery. It's designed to be used with gloves, and we don't wear them on the road. Apart from that, what's great about the A110 on the road is that everyone accepts it. Everyone looks at the car, gives a thumbs up. That's not the case with all sports cars, especially in France. This A110R, who doesn't mean racing, but radical. The R should be called road. And I say that for a good reason. I say this because this car on the road is in its most optimal form of expression. Our Michelin Cup 2 tires are never overrun on the road. Not like on the track. On the track, you exceed their capacity and the car starts to move and slide. On the racetrack, the car is very satisfying, but seems less in its element than on the road. On the road, driving at this speed, you have a lot of grip. This car is simply diabolical. Short gear ratios. You do what you want, it's great. With a Cayman, you don't have a short gearbox. With a manual gearbox, the gears are long. You put it in third gear and stay like that. The gearbox is quite fast. And with 300 PS, you've got more than enough. Not so on the track, we'd like a bit more. Look how great it is. Any other car would end up understeering. 
This car is like a religion. It forgives you everything. You can even go to extremes. When you sweat, it's not out of fear. It's the effort you put in. It's not the electronics that keep you on the roads. It's you, thanks to your little hands. The Alpine A110R Turini or not Turini. This car is made for the road. Other people don't tell you that. Drive it on the road. Subscribe to our channel. You'll learn a few things. So, what do you think of this A110R Turini? Yes, it's true, it's expensive. 106,000 euros is a lot of money, but who are this car's rivals? Let's think about it. Porsche has the Cayman GT4 RS. We're in another league. You need 160,000 euros, 500 PS. That's a different category. And just below, what do we have? The GTS version, flat six engine, 400 PS. That, that's nice, isn't it? But acceleration is slower than the Alpines. And what's the price? 93,000 euros. In France with 60,000 euros malus, 153,000 euros. It's much more expensive than that. With French taxes based on CO2 emissions, even the S version is more expensive than the Alpine. So yes, the A110 R Turini is expensive, but compared to what it offers in France, there's no competition. So yes, we can criticize its small 1.8 liter four cylinder engine, which produces just 300 PS. The same power as the Alpine A110 S, but it offers a different atmosphere. Suspensions are adjustable. Unfortunately, we didn't have time to adjust them before taking the car out on the track. It's a car you have to get to know and discover. You can't do it in a day. It's fascinating, but a bit short. It's a learning process that takes time. But one thing's for sure, this isn't a car that's going to make you dream by reading its technical specifications. It's not designed for that. You're not going to be able to show it off until you've proven yourself behind the wheel, until you've brought people with you for a session. This car gives you a banana in the face and in the pants. This is a car from the real world. It's a true driver car. You don't have a ridiculous amount of technology. To go fast on the road, you need to sweat. This car manages to be natural and to protect you. Perhaps this one is far too expensive compared to the A110S, which is already very good. And even the normal one, which is here, is great. In fact, it's the concept, the whole a 110 idea. That's great. Whether it's the normal version, the GT, the S, the R, the R Torini, or any other A110, tell yourself that this car will offer you unique sensations that no other car on this planet will. Well, it's time for our conclusion. So, to sum up and conclude the day, this car isn't just great, it's also wonderful and miraculous. And I forgot, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us a lot. If you want us to bring you beautiful images and superb car reviews, subscribe now. What do you think of the A110? Tell us what you think. Go ahead, leave a comment.